thank you very much. I just bid you greetings from Chicago, where God lives. And he lives here too. Amen in Mumbai. Well, thank you. Let me set my clock here because I certainly want to leave on time. Okay. Well, you're ready to hear the word of God tonight. Yes. That wasn't very enthusiastic. <laughs> all right, all right. That's what I'm talking about. Let it flow. Let it flow. What, who said that? Well, I used to give away money when you said that. <laughs> Let's pray and we'll start. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for the word of God. Thank you for the anointing that's on me in these lips of clay that I speak this word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness, asking you to think through my mind, speak through my lips, and this word will come forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force, and with signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow the word preached. We thank you for it. We call it done in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? amen. All right. If you have a Bible, I want you to open it to... Joel, J-O-E-L, that's Joel, and chapter 2. Now, I want to talk to you tonight about faith in the anointing. Faith in the anointing. <clears throat> now, turn my volume up here. Okay, let's, I'm going to read here, and then we'll go into it and just start talking together. But I guarantee you that when you leave, when I finish this, you're going to be so happy you came. <laughs> that you're going to be changed even while I'm speaking this word. How many of you believe that? Okay, all right. Okay, um, I'll start reading at verse 23. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice, Lord your God, which has, dealt, uh, has given you the former rain moderately, and he'll cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month, and the floor shall be full of wheat, the vat shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you, and you shall eat plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, which has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Verse 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Turn over with me to Acts chapter 1, please. Over in the book of Acts chapter 1, this is after Jesus was now raised from the dead. And he said in verse 4, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And when they therefore will come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Ju all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. That's our reading, and it's called Faith in the anointing. Faith in the anointing. Let's make sure we understand what the anointing 
is. Over in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, he says the anointing is the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. The burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. Over in Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, it says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. He said, the Lord hand has started this work, the foundation, and his hand shall finish it. Over in Acts, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, talking about Jesus, how God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now, what is all that talking about? It's speaking about the anointing. And the anointing is God's power coming on human flesh to do what only God can do. It <clears throat> gives you sweatless victories. The anointing is God's ability coming on a human to perform works of God. Now, <clears throat> I'm slowing down there because this anointing is described all through the Bible. And when he talks about in the book of Joel that the anointing is, is symbolic of rain, or rain is symbolic of that anointing, that it's going to be the former and the latter rain. These, that means two different anointings. And a person may be anointed for different things. You may be anointed for education. You may be anointed for business. You may be anointed for Hollywood. And that anointing is going to distinguish you. It's going to promote you. Now, I don't care who you are, what background you come from, what country you're in, and how old you are. It makes no difference. When that anointing comes on you, you can do what humans or natural people cannot do. Amen. Period. Now, this anointing that Joel talked about, just a minute, the Lord is speaking to me to make sure I teach something to you here. Um, this anointing that Joel talked about, he said, my people shall never be ashamed. Now, <clears throat> what he's saying here is that the rain is going to wash away the shame. But there may be shame in our lives. There may be shame in our background, some things that perhaps happened to us when we were um, a younger or in our past. There may be some kind of crippling disease. There may be uh, some kind of failures in life, so forth and so on. This rain is going to restore some things. And it's going to make it so that God's people are no longer ashamed. Now, he says... In verse 28 of Joel, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. All flesh meaning <clears throat> that in the Old Testament, he didn't pour out his spirit on all flesh. He poured out his spirit or the anointing on mainly the prophets, the priests, and the kings. And he poured that anointing out on them. Why? To do special work. Or it might be somebody with special assignments that he put that anointing on. Now, what has happened lately, and the reason why I'm teaching on this, is because the church has not been functioning in that anointing. Now, when I say that, I don't mean everybody. But the majority of what I've observed in the church, people have been functioning in their own ability. And that is not the way you and I are supposed to get things done. Over in Luke chapter 4, 
and verse 18. Jesus preaches. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now you open up the book, turn to the place in Isaiah chapter 61, and he read from that. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then the Bible says he closed the book and sat down, and the eyes of all them in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began to say, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Now he turned to the scripture from the book of Isaiah. So he began to read from the book of Isaiah chapter 61. And he read verse 1 and part of verse 2. And he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Now what is he saying? He is saying, I'm anointed to fulfill this. And he fulfilled it. Which tells me that the anointing ensures that you fulfill the purpose that you've been sent here to do. And a lot of people are not fulfilling that purpose because they're not anointed or don't have faith in that anointing. Now, faith comes one way, by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I've got to hear about the anointing before I have faith in the anointing for the anointing to work in my life. Can you say amen? amen? All right. So now, what we read, is we read here over in Joel, that God in the last days is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And over in uh, the book of Acts, we saw where the disciples were gathered with Jesus after he was raised from the dead. And they wanted to know, now, when are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said, it's not for you to know the time or the seasons what the Father has put in his own power, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you'll be witnesses unto me, both in Judea, Judea Jerusalem, so forth and so on. Now, you shall receive power. What kind of power? Holy Ghost power. Same power that formed the earth. When God said, let there be light, the Holy Spirit was moving on the face of the earth, and light was. So one of the jobs of the Holy Ghost is to reveal or manifest the word. So you shall receive power. The word power there is dunamis, which means miracle working ability. Now, he's not talking about somebody who's standing in the pulpit. No, I know that there's an anointing on me to preach, there's an anointing on me to lay hands on the sick or anoint the sick with oil. I know that. But he's talking about the average person sitting right in the chair. He is saying, I'm going to give you miracle working ability. All right? Now, I remember one time that I was in a park. I was in Minneapolis. I was still working for IBM at that time. And I was regional marketing manager in computers. And But God is really touching my heart. I mean, it's born again, filled with the Spirit, and uh, it's really touching my heart. And I think the idea of ministry was just beginning to evolve and manifest in my life. But So I wanted to have a meeting. I wanted to have a meeting out in the park. And I wanted to have a meeting, you know, because I'd seen on television where they have big meetings and so forth. So me and some other people got together and said, hey, we're going to have a meeting. So I got to that meeting and I preached the gospel. And then God said, I want you to heal the sick. Well, I told them that, the few people that were there. And this one lady comes up. And she came with another lady with her. And I said, what do you need healing for? She said, well, I can't feel my face. I said, okay. I said, how many of you know? I said, do you know that Jesus is a healer? She said, yeah. I said, okay. I said, I'm going to pray for you. The power of God is going to heal you. 
Well, she was, she was ready for it. So I laid my hand on her face, and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed. When I said that, I took my hand away, and she felt her face. She said, I can, I can feel my face. I said, lady, Jesus healed you. Here's what she said. No, he didn't. I said, ma'am, you healed me. I said, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Uh, Christ is in me. See, he's in me doing the same thing that he did years ago. And I say, he healed you. No, he didn't. You healed me. All right, now why am I saying that? I'm saying that because <clears throat> there was a donkey that Jesus rode in town on in his last, in the Passion, when he was about to go to the cross. And people were bowing down and throwing palm leaves and so forth. And this donkey got back to the stable that night. And this is what the donkey said. Did you see all those people bowing down to me? <laughs> now, this is a confused donkey. Now, my point to you is, is that, no, it was Christ. See, don't get it twisted. It's Christ. And the reason why people don't have faith in it is because they don't know that this same anointing that was on Jesus, the Christ, that same anointing is on you to do the same thing that Jesus did. Now, here's a scripture found in John's gospel and John in chapter 14. And here's what he says. He says in verse 10, he says, Believeth thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? For the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he's doing the work. Now I want you to see this. Now what is Jesus doing? If you know anything about Jesus, he is what I call the sample son. Now why do I call him that? Because when Jesus came to the earth, he didn't come as a God. He came as a man. Now you've got to understand this. Because he had to come as a man for God to work through him. When God made man, here's what he said. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth. Now, notice who God gave the dominion or authority to in the earth. He gave it to man. Now, watch this. Now, for God to work in the earth, he needs man's permission and participation. He made it that way. God made it that way. He even says, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, you see what I'm saying? He's saying, I will allow what you will allow. And I will disallow whatever thing you disallow. Now notice, the authority for governing the earth is not up to God. It's up to you. Are you with me? No. So here I am. Now I'm finding all these things out because he said here, Jesus said himself, it's not me, it's the Father in me. He's doing the work. Now this is Jesus. So then he goes on down to verse uh, 12. And he says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than he shall he do, because I'm going to the Father. Now he qualifies that when you go on down. Look what he says here in verse 16. 
and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Now he is saying here that, wait a minute, the power that was in me doing this is the same power I'm going to pray that's going to be in you. And you're not going to only do what I did. You're going to do greater works. Say greater works. works. Now, this is what God's plan is for his church. He said in Mark chapter 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall lay hand on the sick and they shall recover. He wasn't talking about the preacher. We can, yes, it applies to the preacher, but it also applies to the reacher. It applies to anybody who has Christ in them. Are you with me? So, You have the miracle working one in you. I said, you didn't give me a a loud amen there. So what am I doing now? I'm making you aware of that anointing. Because if you're not aware of it, one, you can't take advantage of it on a daily basis. And second, it's impossible for you without that anointing to reach your destiny. You can't do it. You need God's power to fulfill God's purpose. Isn't that good? So I'm saying, I'm coming to announce to you, because of this night, and you listening to me on the anointing, that from this night, your life is going to be drastically different than it has been. This is going to be a turnaround in your life. Subscribe to the Friendship Club channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. Like, comment, and share. Thank you for watching. Visit us at thefriendshipclub.in.